Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Monroe Live. I'm here with Jordan and uh, today what we're going to do is give you just a little preview. This is the uh, vehicle that we're going to be tearing apart. This is a Cyber Beast. It's a tri-motor and um, it's got everything on the planet. And Jordan here is going to tell you all about it right from the Moroni. Yeah. All right, guys, welcome back. So we're excited to get this thing. So it's the Cyber Beast. It is the tri-motor vehicle. This thing rang in just at over 121K. So yeah, not- 125. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not, not inexpensive, yeah. right? So right here on the window sticker, uh, pretty hefty price to pay, but we're getting a lot as well. So we got the tri-motor, got the 123 kilowatt hour battery pack. This is equipped with full self-driving. This is the foundation series. So this has most of the goodies that one could get at present with respect to the Cybertruck, yeah. right? Um, it's, it's equipped with any number of cameras. We've got the bi-directional charging capability. So there's a lot to offer that this truck has that we're obviously gonna be diving into, not just in terms of what it's got in terms of the feature content, that's great. Obviously with Monroe, we're gonna dive into how did they do it from a technical perspective and what does that execution look like? right yeah. as we tear it down further yeah absolutely so first off um i had this on a little road trip i i was i did a speaking engagement in grand rapids michigan so i got a chance to drive it for a few hundred miles um i will tell you um it drives really well this is a big beast no question about it it's probably the biggest pickup truck from my from a size standpoint that i've ever been in so I've, I've done, uh, driven uh, like uh, some people call them 18 wheelers, but, but at the end of the day, um, class eight trucks. And this is kind of like how you have to think when you're driving this thing. You, you have to be cognizant all the time that this is a big truck. The biggest problem that I had was whack jobs. Um, I have never been run off the road so many times in my life in one trip with people that are going like this and this at the same time, looking out their passenger side window. Um, <laughs> I will also tell you that this car, well, it's dirty now, but when I brought this thing to the parking garage, um, there was like 10 million little teeny hands. Kids love this thing. They think it's a spaceship. Um, so it's got some features that I wasn't expecting. I, I expected people might want to look at it. I didn't know that kids would go crazy. As a matter of fact, on the way back, I stopped at uh, Myers, uh, where they have a lot of Tesla charging. I needed a charge. So it said I was going to need 15 minutes. So I went in and I walked across the parking lot to the Chick-fil-A. I had, uh, I had uh, lunch, came back, looked out, and somebody must have drove up a school bus because they were everywhere, everywhere around this thing. It was like unbelievable. So I went back in and had another sandwich. Anyway, <laughs> that's kind of like what... I've experienced so far driving this thing around. Yeah, I mean, Sandy, I think you said it all. I mean, to say this thing is a spectacle, you know, you see the press imagery, you see online photos, and it's, it's like, wow, that's quite a truck. Then you see it in person, and it really yeah. kind of, your jaw hits the floor, you know. You can say whatever you want about the styling, but one thing it is certainly not is uh, a quiet vehicle. It's, no. it's got some noise driving around, and I mean that in a yeah. visual sense, right? So it's, uh, it's an interesting vehicle. You know, for me, as we tear this thing down, uh, you know, we're, we're gonna look at all the features and specs. Some of the things that I really wanna key in, and I think that Monroe is naturally going to do as we tear this apart is, everyone talks about exoskeleton. Obviously the steel is, is right in your face when you look at this vehicle. We're gonna be interested in looking at not only the giga castings, not only the stainless steel, but moreover the interplay, the interfaces, how right. all of this stuff is really coming together. When, when folks are saying exoskeleton, to me, you know, I think of, well, no internal structure. Well, we've got giga castings. And so a unibody, if you look at any other body in white out there, it still has external structure, so it could be considered an exoskeleton, but it's certainly not this. And so to me, the key in the structure is in the thickness in the material, but more, more specifically, it's how they interconnect everything. Yeah. So all the joints, all the interfaces, that's something that I'm very interested to see. It's a very novel approach to a vehicle period, um, but most certainly from a materials and execution perspective. So yeah. in terms of those interfaces, Sandy, maybe this is a good time to hand it off to you. You've looked at any number of vehicles in industry over the years 
from a fit finish quality, we call it FFQ or gap and flush studies. What's your initial take when you walk around this vehicle in terms of the fit and finish? Okay, so first thing we have to do is we have to bear in mind that this is stainless steel and this is um, a unique design. And one of the things that's unique is that all these, <clears throat> all these edges are proud. And at first I thought, wow, they didn't do a very good job there. And then I find it's like that through the whole vehicle. It's slightly proud, and I think that's for shed, for water, getting rid of water. <clears throat> One thing that I was really impressed at was this gap, which is no, almost non-existent. They can't weld it. Obviously, you couldn't stamp this huge piece in one piece. But at the end of the day, having this fit up the way it does, to me, is absolutely amazing. The hardest thing you can do, hardest thing you can do is make square sides square to each other. Um, radiuses will always take your eye away from the problems associated with this. There's no, uh, there's there's no, no forgiveness, hiding. no hiding at all. Yeah. So if we put our fingers along here, and by the way, the other thing that's amazing is this. Look at the size of that wind, windshield wiper. At, at the end of the day, all these things kind of like harmonize together to make sure you've got a great driving experience. And so when the windshield wiper is on, and it was raining when I went down to Grand Rapids, when it's on, this, uh, this keeper, I guess this uh, water dam, I mean, it works <laughs> remarkably well to make sure that I don't get dribbles coming back onto the, uh, onto the windshield. So as far as fit and finish is concerned, if we look at the gaps, and I haven't really looked at them that much, but I can tell by my baby finger, they're all pretty much the same. We always give them about a millimeter, plus or minus, to, to, uh, to fiddle around, or 0.5 of a millimeter to fool around with. And that's kind of like what we're looking at here. All the way through here, um, it's amazing. Uh, like I said, a lot of this stuff is really tough, really tough. Now, you'll notice that this and this are a little bit spread. That would be me. Okay, so one of the things that I'm unhappy about is I don't know where the back end of this vehicle is. The camera says I've got about a foot, uh, but, uh, but in actually it's more like an inch. And so I, um, I hit uh, the back wall and bent this here, scuffed that, scuffed down here, and bent the other side here as well. So this is me. So now I know what not to do with my car, <laughs> which I'm picking up today. I love, can you pop the, uh, pop the gate? Yeah. So I love this, um, I love the, the size of the, um, of the bed here. This is, a, this is a good size and, and I like something else. If you'll notice here, you've got a, you've got kind of like an angle thing here going on and that's because it wanted to, I don't know, uh, create that theme all the way through, including back here. So I measured it up and I can still get my four by four plywood in. They did a, a fantastic job of mm, the art and the function at the same time. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty sizable bed, you know, and there's a lot of tie downs, which, you know, mm. my wife and I, we're building a house right now. So my truck is just perpetually packed with stuff in the back. Yeah. And so I like the low load in height accommodated by, you know, suspension that's yeah. gonna raise and lower the truck. That's great. All the tie down hooks are awesome. The only thing that I would say to Tesla, you know, up high is, you know, to have to, to move the hook, there's pros and cons. That's, that's great because I can put it anywhere I want it, but you still do have to move it. Some other OEMs are opting to put fixed hooks all over the vehicle, yeah. which can get in your way, certainly, but there's pros and cons. The only thing I would say, and this is unique to me, right? I'm a little vertically challenged, if you haven't noticed, <laughs> but getting over the bed rail is a little bit of a challenge. So um, the, the pro to this is if you do have cargo in, you are really able to contain a lot back there. So when this thing is closed, it's somewhere in between a full cap, like a conventional bed cap, and an open bed with a tonneau, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, it, it's an interesting approach. I, I certainly, as a, as a potential end user, would say, all right, what else, what else can we get to close this out? If we're going to have close to a bed cap, how do I get a full bed cap just from a function perspective? But it's, it is a very unique design. And frankly, I really like the way that this whole timbre door style yeah. system closes. Yeah. It seems much more robust and frankly, just a better design 
than what yeah. we saw in the likes of Rivian, for the example. Rivian. The Rivian one, I think the way that they made this one work better was the Rivian timbre, and that's what these are called, just timbre doors. The Rivian timbres are basically double wide, and um, that, that's just not the way they make roll top desks, and, um, and in airplanes we use the same sort of a style. But we always use something that's fairly narrow, basically because it's easier to contain Yep. When it gets down there, it's got to go somewhere. How is that folding together? So you need to have that. And you also need to make sure that you don't have too much of a opportunity for, for, for caulking. So this is, a, this is a good deal. I like, I like everything about this. Um, but um, again, this is a truck that's made for um, somebody like myself. This is, um, this truck is for a hunter, uh, somebody who wants to uh, occasionally handle things, somebody who wants to use quads and bikes. This is a, like a sportsman kind of, uh, kind of a pickup. Now, uh, not to piss off the guys at Tesla, but the F-150 is a work truck. Yep. The F-150 Lightning uh, is the best work truck ever. This to me is the best sport truck ever. I think maybe the last thing back here, you know, yeah. there have been a few complaints about maybe some of the size that the Tesla, the Cybertruck gave up in the front area. I think they more than made up for it back here. I, yeah. I really like the size of the bin here. I also like that um, you're not really giving up anything else bed-wise because of the bin. So just like a Ridgeline, um, like Rivian to an extent, they really capitalized on this open space back here. Obviously being a, a BEV vehicle, we're not worrying about exhaust back here, tailpipes, resonators, things yeah, of that yeah. nature. So why not capitalize on the space? I like this a lot. Well, the other thing that, uh, that's coming up, and that's back to um, Jordan's point about what could I do to turn this into something else? There's a ton of folks <clears throat> that are gonna be putting in campers. And I mean, everybody on the planet has tried to figure out what the dimensions are and whatnot. So we've got uh, two of our customers um, that are, are doing something for the back end of the cyber truck. And we're gonna be uh, taking dimension, serious dimensions and sending them off to them so that they can get their, um, get their camper tops and, um, and uh, like I say, a full, a full size uh, box in here, sitting in inside of the bed. Yep. So, but uh, all in all, um, this has been brilliant. And now, for the part that Eric likes the best, um, we are uh, going to be looking for sponsors. Um, this is a very, very expensive uh, situation for us. Um, and uh, for those of you out there who have. Um, a desire to have one of your stickers on the doors or something um, as a true, a true sponsor, similar to Savec when they did the Model S. We'd, uh, uh, we're very anxious to have you give us a call. All in all, everyone, I, I think we're excited to tear this down. A lot of uniqueness in terms of what we expect to find under yeah. the skin, which is a structural skin in this right. case. So I would say stay tuned for all the body structure stuff. This is going to be coming apart quick. Yeah. So keep up with us and uh, hopefully we'll catch you on the next one. Yeah. Oh, by the way, one last thing. Um, for those of you who are interested in the report, uh, please let us know um, what you want and stuff like that. Please, again, get in touch with, um, with Monroe at... Um, Monroe. Sales at, yeah, sales yeah. at leandesign.com. Sales at leandesign.com. And, um, and uh, we just need to know who's interested. Um, we're, uh, that'll, that'll be basically how we determine how quickly we can move on this thing. Because we still have to make money to keep the doors open. So um, sponsors, people who want to buy the report. For those folks who bought the, uh, the cyber uh, bottle opener, thank you so much. Um, that did help quite a bit. Um, I know people ragged on me saying, oh, you should just sell it for 10 bucks and whatnot. That's fine, but this is $125,000. Putting a lot of money into it before any money comes back really upsets my banker. So you guys with the, the little bottle opener, we still have a few left, but you guys with the bottle openers, thank you so much. That was very, very helpful. Anyhow, I don't think there's anything else, Jordan. I think that's, that's good. 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 All right. Thanks for watching and stay tuned because there's more, a lot more to come on Monroe Live. Thank you. Thanks everyone.